My name is Joyce Dixon, and I'll be leading the service for Charlene. We have gathered here today, some in person and others via live stream. We come together to celebrate the life of Charlene. Gathering together allows us an opportunity for our hearts to be one, and for our grief we will not bear alone. Let us remember a woman who is loved by many. Our first piece of music that we will listen to today is You Are My Sunshine. sunshine my only sunshine you make me happy when skies are gray you'll never know dear how much i love you please don't take my sunshine away the other night dear when i lay sleeping i dreamt i held you So I hung my head and cried You are my sunshine, my only sunshine You make me happy when skies are gray You'll never know, dear, how much I love you Please don't take my sunshine Join with me in prayer. Eternal God, we are glad that Charlene is with you now, is fully loved by you, and has nothing to fear. We pray for her family as they feel Charlene's loss amongst them. She loved them so dearly, and they will miss her so much. Grant them strength for the days ahead. May they find old memories to dis and discover new ones. And may your peace, a peace that embraces Charlene, be their peace today and in the days that lie ahead. In the name of Jesus, our Good Shepherd, amen. At this time, I would like to invite Damien's good friend, Michael Forward, to share the eulogy. Hey, everyone. <clears throat> I'd just like to uh, just take a quick moment here to acknowledge and thank everyone that made it here today and for everyone that's watching online. Um, it takes a little extra effort these days to make it to these kinds of social events and to get through the kind of the technical difficulties of watching online. So thank you everyone for making that extra effort and to be part of Charlene's celebration of life here today. Um, first, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Michael Sayers, I'm Damien's best friend. Um, I'm absolutely honored to be here and to be able to deliver these words about Charlene for you guys here today. And I'd like just to thank Damien and Alicia for, for giving me the chance. It really means a lot. 
So I don't remember when I met Charlene because I was too young. And uh, my mom and Charlene had a job sharing gig at the Paint and Credit Union. So when Charlene was working, Damien would be over at my place. And when my mom was working, I'd be over at Damien's place and lots of times in between just for fun. Um, and just as fast as me and Damien became best friends, uh, Charlene became my second mom. Damien is still my best friend today, and Charlene is still my second mom today. Excuse me. Uh, we were lucky to grow up in a small town, Peyton, where the whole community was so great. Uh, for some reason, uh, there was a large amount of boys, all the same age group, and Charlene was like a mom to all of us. Uh, she coached us in softball and then up into fastball. Um, I'd like to be humble here, but I can't. We were awesome. Um, with her steering the ship, uh, we kicked the crap out of everybody. So that was great. And she somehow did it with, uh, with, with such grace when I think back about it. Uh, us group of guys ran into a lot of adults that couldn't, couldn't get a handle on us. And she sure did. She uh, commanded respect. and We loved and respected her just like she was our mom. So that was, that was something I'll always remember. Um, but I guess growing up with those five brothers, uh, that probably helped a lot. I met those dudes, and they were no joke. <laughs> so uh, that probably didn't hurt. Um, but I do remember when we were playing ball, she'd, uh, if there was somebody pitching and they were having trouble s seeing the zone or somebody at bat and they just couldn't quite, couldn't quite dial in there, uh, her thing to yell would always be, OK, a little dark one, a little dark one, let's go, a little dark one. <laughs> I don't know what that meant then, <laughs> and I don't know what it means now. <laughs> But uh, I've got four kids of my own now, and when ball season rolls around, um, I do a little coaching myself, and that's the first thing I yell at every one of my players and my own kids as well. So that one really stuck. I know I'm not the only one who felt like Charlene was a mom to them too. Uh, this was evident when I let the guys know after I got the bad news from Damien. Um, everyone was shocked. We texted a few good memories and reflected a bit. Uh, the most popular memory was the birthday cakes. Uh, Charlene always made money cakes, and they were awesome. Uh, she'd make a cake and she'd sneak coins into each piece uh, before she gave it to us somehow. I'm not really sure how. Uh, Damien's piece always had the most money, but uh, don't, I don't think it was a fluke that mine usually came in a close second there. Uh, to all the boys watching, you know it's true. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but me and the guy's conversation ended with us telling each other to hug our moms. Um, so this one really hurts. Charlie... Charlene was a big part of my life and who I am as a person today. I'll always be grateful for my time with her. Um, yeah, so I'd just like to take a, <clears throat> just like to read a few words now uh, written by Shannon Smith, who's Charlene's longtime best friend. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> First, I'd like to thank, these are written by, uh, yeah, Shannon Smith. This is uh, Charlene's best friend. First, I'd like to thank Charlene's family for allowing me the privilege of contributing to the celebration of her life today. I am honored to be able to share the memories of Charlene with you. The day before Charlene left this world, she and I met to exchange Christmas presents. Due to COVID-19, we met outside, and because of the cold, our visit was brief. As we parted, I told Charlene that I loved her, and she did the same. And we went our separate ways, little knowing that this would be the last time we would see each other, at least in this life. <laughs> Each of us, over the course of our lives, will cross paths with hundreds, maybe thousands of people, whether it be classmates, co-workers, neighbors, or countless others. We come across in our day-to-day -day existence. Very few, other than our immediate families, will stay a part of us forever. Charlene and I were the exception. We were friends for 60 years. No matter how far apart we lived, or how busy we were with families or careers, we made room for each other in our lives. We stayed in touch by phone and visited in person as often as we could. We had girlfriend overnights, we celebrated birthdays, we were there for each other during the good times and the bad. We shared our hopes and dreams, challenges and triumphs, family achievements and tragedies. We laughed and cried together, we loved each other. Both of us knew how rare a friendship was. We often commented on how lucky we were to have one that was so strong and long lasting. And this is why both of us held onto it so tightly. And now why, or, and why now, after losing her, it is so utterly devastating. It seems to me that our friendship was meant to be. In about 1960, my family moved into a, a home across the back alley from the Wilms on the west end of Maidstone. It wasn't long before Charlene and I discovered one another and at about the age three and became inseparable. 
Our extended families were close too. Charlene's mom, Hazel, and my mom became close friends, as did my brother, Kevin, and Charlene's brother, Brian. As the only girl in the family, and with Hazel being such a talented seamstress, Charlene always had the nicest clothes. Occasionally, Hazel made matching outfits for both Charlene and me. I remember when we were about six or seven years old, Hazel made bright yellow summer tops and shorts for us. When we played together on the schoolyard swings, wearing these outfits, we were told that we looked like canaries. We thought that was hilarious. In her youth, Charlene was quite an athlete. There wasn't much she wasn't good at. I suppose growing up with brothers, she naturally learned how to be physical and strong, if only to defend herself. She was the star pitcher of our softball team. She curled, played volleyball and badminton, and did track and field. She excelled on the basketball court, hockey ice, and broomball field too, where opposing team members became well aware of those elbows of hers. <laughs> Charlene also loved ice skating. I remember one carnival in Maidstone, when we were about 14 years old, Charlene got to skate a solo performance. It was, I was so proud of my friend out there, alone on the ice, under the spotlight, in front of hundreds of people. She was amazing. Charlene loved her job at the credit union. I often asked her about, her, about retirement, but she was determined to work as long as she could. While she had a position in accounting department in the latter part of her career, she often commented to me on how much she enjoyed her early years as a teller when she had got to have face-to-face -face interaction with customers. Helping seniors especially gave her a great deal of satisfaction. Charlene treasured her family. She was a devoted daughter, a loving sister to five brothers, as well as a cherished sister-in-law, aunt, and cousin to the extended Wilm family. Charlene was so very proud of her two children, Alicia and Damien. She thought the world of Carla, her daughter-in-law, and being grandma to her beloved McKenna, Peyton, and Davis brought her such great joy every single day. The days ahead are going to be difficult for us, who love Charlene. The shock, grief, and sense of loss may seem all-encompassing. In time, though, we'll have to hold on to the belief that this unbearable pain will lessen, and it will be good times, and that smiling face that will come to mind when we think of her. Because we loved her so much, Charlene will be a part of us forever. To conclude, I would like to share the following poem. You can shed tears that she is gone, or you can smile because she has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she will come back, or you can open your eyes and see, that, and see all that she has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see her, or can be full of the love that she shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember her and only that she is gone, or you can cherish her memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you can do what she would want. Smile, open your eyes, love, and go on. Farewell to my forever friend until we meet again. Shannon. My next piece is from uh, Damien, her son. Um, this one says, Mom, I don't have a memory without you in it. You're always taking care of me, whether it was as far away as Taiwan as a as far away as Taiwan, as a child, ready to catch me as soon as I fell, and more recently, five minutes from your home to ours. I remember in high school when I was a stubborn teenager, sitting in the basement all gloomy. You were always there to make my day better, asking me if I wanted to go to rent a movie or make me my favorite meal. All you ever wanted to do was to make things easier for the people you loved, and you did. I can't thank you enough for how amazing a grandmother you have been. It only took a few trips for us coming to see you in Saskatoon, with Canada, of course, before you decided to pack up your life there and move to Lloyd to become a full-time grandma and mom again. It was, also it was also beautiful to see that not, on not only did you open your arms to my wife, but also considered her a not a daughter-in-law, but a daughter. All three of my kids got to see your beautiful soul and felt the love of a wonderful grandmother. Love you, Mom. Uh, this next one is from Carla, Damien's wife, Charlene's daughter-in-law. To my mama S, my darling, I very much remember the first time we met. I wasn't sure if you were excited to meet me or touch the first grandbaby bump, but it didn't take me long to realize it was both. From that day on, I saw how amazingly genuine you were, the way you noticed all the small things. You would continually go out of your way to help or to listen. You got people. You got me. We were similar in many ways, especially on how we both liked things done our way, and thankfully our way was more the same than not. I hope, you know, I hope you know that everything you did was so very appreciated. You raised an amazing son who is an amazing father and husband. Thank you for always sticking, to my, or sticking on my side gently or to gently remind him to pick up his socks 
<laughs> as he reads this next to me, he says, she always took your side. <laughs> the way you took such good care of our kids, you came to my rescue many times. I am grateful they had you. My heart is broken. I thought we would have you forever. Thank you. Thank you for all the things. P.S. I'll never forget my special butter tarts. No raisins. They were my absolute favorite and just for me. And you made them every single Christmas. I will continue to bake all of your wonderful desserts for the kids and for Damien always. Goodbye, my love. We will miss you. Her Christmas treats really were the best. <laughs> uh, this next one is from Alicia. And it says, uh, Oh, my little mom, we still can't believe we'll never hug you again. What I wouldn't give for one more squeeze. So blessed we are to have your big, wide love, big enough for us all. I'll be grateful every day for what remains of you in us. In the way we laugh or make our bed or write our name, in the stories we will tell and the new memories we will make, you will be there and you will be so very missed with lots and lots and lots of love. So Charlene was obviously a person that uh, everyone she met, she touched deeply. And I think we're all going to miss her. I think I feel confident saying that about everybody here in this room and everybody watching online. So, um, yeah, so we'll miss her a lot. Thanks. Thank you so much, Mike. Uh, now we have a special piece of music bridge over troubled water and Alicia is singing. Dream. 
dreams are on their way. See how they shine. Oh, when you need a friend, I'm sailing right behind. Like Our scripture passage that we chose today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God makes me lie down in green pastures. God leads me beside still waters. God restores my soul. God leads me down right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Today is the first day of winter, the shortest day of the year. It can be seen as long and dark and cold. And I've discovered a poem by one of my favorite poets, Joyce Rupp that I'd like to share with you now. May you find comfort in the spiritual words. O oh, frosty season, come etch your face onto our window pane. Light a candle in our hearts each morning. Reveal to us the beauty of waiting in the darkness. Keep vigil with us in this nurturing season. O oh, come. O season of the sheltered seed, come, come all of us to be guardians of life. Smile through the darkness of long nights. Remind us that each seed needs a winter. Invite us to trust what is shrouded in mystery. O come, O season of the long darkness, come. Come with your misty gray cloak. Cast your dark robe over all that needs sleep. Surround us with faith in the unknown. Protect us from too much light. O oh, come. O oh, wise season of reflection. Come. Come with your teachable moments. Summon your spiritual powers. Evoke our inner strength. Heal our reluctance to wait for spring. O oh, come. O oh, season of brilliant sunset. Come. Come to all that has grown dim in us. Sing your winter chants to our reluctant hearts. Cast beauty on to our winter world. Reveal to us our own gift of being light in darkness. O oh, come, O oh, season of mystery and contemplation, come, come into the fallow grounds of our being, allure us from doing into non-doing, reveal to us the hidden wisdom of our souls, restore what is out of balance 
in our lives. O come. O winter storybook season, come. Come lift memories out of the darkness. Create new stories that have never been told. Stir through the golden pages of our lives. Recite poetry to us. Tell us our names. O come. O season of hidden life, come. Come teach us humility. Cut through the frozen ground of our being. Soften that which has become hard and unfeeling. Free all that resists the silence waiting. O come. This poetic voice of winter leads us to wisdom for our own time. We are saddened with heavy hearts, but the beauty of life and the seasons surround us and allow us a glimpse of what is possible. Turning to God during our most difficult times is helpful to know that we are not alone, that we live in God's world. Charlene spent her whole life looking after her family and others. She was a generous, giving person. Her children shared with me that she remembered people's names and the names of their family. What a gift. She was full of compassion and full of love for everyone. Charlene loved tradition and had many family recipes of baking and the goodies were passed down from generation to generation. So I remind you that baking and eating the frozen stuff from the freezer is quite delectable. It will taste this much, that much better this year, knowing that it was made with love. Charlene is walking with God now. She feels no pain and can rejoice in the ever after. Find peace in knowing that she will be watching over you. Our loved ones leave us physically, but our memories are only a thought away. This Christmas season will be a difficult one in many ways, but your memories will sustain you. Help us keep our loved ones with us through the tough times. Spring will come after the cold of winter, but our hearts may stay full of life and renewal, knowing the circle of life is never ending. We will all be together again someday. At this time, we're going to have an opportunity to see a slideshow in the pictorial memories of Charlene's life.
Pusher? Yeah, pusher. What's <laughs> 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 it, cowboy say? Howdy? Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Grandma is done, done, done. What else does the cowboy say? Yeehaw! 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 That one good. Oh, hot, hot feet. Oh, hot. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go. <laughs> 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 That's for 
Tender and loving God, we pray for Charlene and all those that she loved. For them, we ask for the resources stronger than anything that we can say or do. Peace, joy, and hope. That they can find comfort and reassurance that love does not end. Be with everyone who struggles with this loss so they do not feel alone. We will raise our voices together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our final music selection that we're listening to is Edelweiss. Thank you. 
divine creation does not cease until all things have found wholeness, union, and integration with the common ground of all being. As children of the timeless one, our time-bound lives we fill with completion in the all-embracing creator. In the meantime, we embrace the present, embodying hope, loving our enemies, and caring for the earth. Go into the world with a daring and tender love. The world is waiting. Go in peace and all that you do, do by the power of love. We send Charlene to God to join the saints where there is neither, neither pain nor sorrow nor sighing, but everlasting life. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen.